I'm taking my ham radio out for a walk today. I know what you're thinking. You're going for a walk, why not take your smartphone? With a smartphone you can talk to friends, you can send texts, emails, you can use an app to check the weather and even track your progress on the walk. Well, to be honest, I like leaving my cell phone in the car sometimes and my handheld ham radio can do all of that stuff. This should be interesting. Let's get going. Today I'm at Sweet Apple Park in Roswell, Georgia. It's overcast, but temperature's just perfect for a little light exercise. I'm gonna do three things in this video while I'm out on my walk today. Number one, I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the capabilities of this Kenwood THD74 ham radio. Number two, I'm gonna get it on the air and try to make a contact. It'll probably be someone local, maybe someone in my club. And number three, I'm gonna talk about automatic packet reporting system and how I can use it to do some of those things you would use your smartphone to do. This is the Kenwood THD74 handheld ham radio and it's Kenwood's top of the line handheld model. It's a tri-bander, meaning it can transmit on the two meter, 1.25 meter and 70 centimeter ham bands. In the US, you do need a license to transmit with this radio. It can also receive a ton of different frequencies. So here's some of the things it can receive. You can scan and receive on some HF ham bands. It has a built-in bar antenna, which isn't very good. So you'll have to have a really strong signal coming in in order to hear it. But yeah, you can listen to single sideband on the 40 meter band. I did some scanning on the 40 meter band. I didn't hear anything, so I don't have an example, but it's pretty neat just to be able to scan it and see what you hear. If you wanna check the current and future weather to see if you're gonna get rained on on your walk, you can tune into the NOAA weather frequencies. They have a set of 10 specific frequencies and they broadcast weather information around the clock on those 10 frequencies. You're usually gonna be within range of one of them. Here's an example. Wednesday night, mostly cloudy. Highs in the mid-70s. Lows around 60. You can receive broadcast FM like you would in your car. So live sports, sports talk, talk radio, even classic rock. If you live near an airport, like I live near one of the busiest in the world. Or you live near an air traffic control center, you can scan the air band or the frequency set aside for aviation and you can listen in on their AM conversations. You can scan and tune a lot of other radio services as well. Uh, things like railroad, business radio, family radio service, general mobile radio service. You can scan all those frequencies and listen in. Uh, if you live near a body of water, you can listen in on marine mobile. I wasn't able to pick anything up today. Um, if I listen long enough, usually I'll get some FRS or GMRS traffic, but nothing right now. But it's neat to be able to scan those frequencies and see what you hear. Beyond the transmit and receive capabilities of this great handheld ham radio, it also has GPS, global positioning. You can mark and save locations. If you're going way out in the wilderness, you can mark the location of your vehicle so you can get back at some point. That's a quick overview of the capabilities of this Kenwood THD74 handheld ham radio. Now let's get it on the air and see if we can talk to somebody with it. To get on the air today, I'm gonna to use my club's two meter repeater if you're new, a repeater is, sounds exactly like what it does. It repeats my transmission. They're usually up in high places on buildings or towers. They have more power than this radio, and they usually have much better antennas. So if I can transmit to the repeater, it will retransmit that over a much larger area. Using my club's repeater a couple miles away, I should be able to talk to people all over North Atlanta. My club's repeater is Echolink connected. It's connected to the internet. That means people from all over the world can connect into the repeater and talk, so you never know who you're gonna get. 
there might be somebody from another country or the other side of this country uh, just waiting to talk to somebody. And there's always new hams coming on the air. Just yesterday I was out for a walk. A new ham came on. He got his license this week and uh, everyone was jumping on to congratulate him and welcome to the hobby. It was a really cool thing. Wish I would have taped it. Let's key up the repeater, see who we get. K4 BBL, it's Brian. I'm Pedestrian Mobile. Anyone up for a quick QSO? QSO is a code for two-way ham radio communication. In my last video, there was a lid that commented, uh, Q code should never be used on voice. So I threw that in just for you. There's usually people monitoring at this time of day. Sometimes a bunch. Maybe they just don't want to talk to me. K4, BBL, it's Brian. I'm Pedestrian Mobile. Anyone up for a quick QSO? That Roger Beep. Hello, Romeo. Four, Mike, Mike, Brian, and you can have saw on crossband. Is your name Brian as well? Didn't catch the whole call sign. Kilo, Romeo, four. KR4. Mike, Mike. KR4, Mike, Mike. KR4, Mike, Mike, K4, BBL. Uh, I don't think we've talked before. It's Brian. I'm here in Roswell. may not have talked before. I've um, been unable to reach the repeater since they moved the antenna. Uh, but now I have a uh, new radio. Um, got a working cross band in the car. So I can work it from the uh, handy talkie indoors and uh, just can't talk to it from the house. That's the thing about ham radio. Sometimes you got to find workarounds. Sounds like you got a good one. Well, I've been a Yezu guy since I got my ticket in the early 90s. And uh, the radio in the car is the first time I bought a non-Yezu radio. So I've got an ICOM and I'm just now starting to get into D-Star. Roger that. I'm on my Kenwood handheld and uh, I have D-Star and enjoy it quite a bit. Uh-oh. Hope his crossband repeat. The setup he has... He's got a buddy that's uh, using Kenwood D-Star. He's got his own uh, D-Star repeater uh, at his house set up. Hotspot. And I don't know. Um, I'm not really that familiar with the Kenwoods, but I've seen the icons around for quite a while. And uh, I guess if I'm going to use D-Star, you know, uh, I'll get the uh, icon radio. So I got the... ID 5100A, and I'm waiting for them to come out with the new handheld so I can get that and get me a hot spot for indoors. That sounds like a good setup. That new handheld looks interesting. I'll have to take a look at that when it comes out. Uh, it's definitely smaller than the Kenwood, uh, I think, from the photos I've seen. And uh, I considered the I considered the the ICOM uh, when I bought this, but um, yeah, I went with the Kenwood. But sounds like you've got a good setup working there for you. I, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Here's Brian, Bravo Romeo, Yankee Alpha November. Same here, same here. Brian here as well. Uh, it was nice talking to you, Brian. I do appreciate you coming back to me and having a quick conversation. And uh, I'm sure I'll catch you on a repeater again now that you got uh, clear access to it. Sure, I try to keep this on uh, anytime I'm available to talk, so I'll be monitoring a lot more often. Nice. Great, and uh, enjoy this wonderful weather we have today. Kilo Romeo 4, Mike Mike. 7 3 to you, Brian. K. I think it was KM4 Mike, no, uh, KR4 Mike Mike. This is K4 BBL Brian, and I'll be standing by. All right, so that's cool. We got to talk to somebody new on the repeater today. I guess he's not a new ham, but uh, they did move the, the repeater antenna from one location to another, and it cut out a big part of um, the people who kind of live west of here. And I know they had a hard time getting in, but it's good he has a new solution. New radio too, that's always a good thing. Now let's talk about Automatic Packet Reporting System, or APRS. I've made a couple videos on APRS, 
but essentially it makes this radio capable of sending and receiving data packets. Those data packets can do a lot of things. For example, they can contain GPS data. They can contain your call sign, a small icon indicating what kind of station you're operating, as well as a short message. With APRS, you can send email, you can send SMS text messages to phones. You can also track yourself. So if you're in range of an iGate, which is basically an APRS receiving station that's connected to the internet, or a Digipeter, which not only receives data packets, but will repeat them and send them, your information will get put on the internet. So as I'm walking, I'm transmitting every two or three minutes my position and a short message. And since I'm in range of an eye gate, that gets reported to the internet. Now what I can do is go to the website, aprs.fi, link in the description, and I can put in my call sign and track where I've been. And here's the data. I haven't been beaconing today, but that's from my walk a couple days ago. And you can see that uh, I've done two laps of the track here. One mile laps, by the way. There is no privacy with APRS, no encryption. It's out there for anyone to receive. And if it's on the internet, well, you know, it's on the internet. But that's how I can track my walk. I covered the three things I wanted to talk about today. I gave you a quick overview of the capabilities of the Kenwood THD 74. I made a quick contact with someone I've never talked to before. That was neat. And then we discussed APRS and the ability to track your walk while you're taking your ham radio out for a walk. I appreciate you watching the video all the way to the end. This is K4BBL73. I'm clear.